Hey yo, back again with me, Faikun, and this time we are playing I'm Brave, a heartbreaking kinetic novel. Uh, that's a title. Uh, it's a game about like story driven about a little girl met a fathery. I don't know. Should I say old man? Yeah. I still don't know. Is is that a, a like like foster father? Like this child was alone in the park and then met a man, thirty years old man, and then there will be sad things happen. Let's just start. It was it was seven p.m. on that beautiful yet cold autumn day. The wind shook the frail trees branches across the street. Tristan Mallory, I guess maybe that's the name of the old guy, met his slow, tired way. Yep, a whirlwind of leaves caught his attention, and he stopped to contemplate them for a few minutes. A spray of colors danced around him. Fragments of red, orange, yellow spread at random, forming a mosaic that stretches on far as far as the eye could see. Endlessly, a rush of beautiful in that gray and foaming city, in that noisy metropolis that was constantly exhaling bad air. Uh, it seemed like a pretty beautiful street to me, and no people around. <laughs> yep. Coming back to his sense, coming back to his senses, the thirty-year-old man shook his head. Now wasn't the time to be daydreaming. He had to go home. Uh, are, is he? Is he doesn't have a job or something? The long day already weighed on his shoulders, but if he was completely honest, work wasn't the most tiring thing in his life. What is? Is it life? After all, uh, Anna's well-paid job represented somewhat of a luxury this day. Like any model employee. He consciously accomplished the task handed to him, no more, no less. Well, well. Uh, now, what was really destroying him was a completely different form of fatigue, an appalling and crushing solitude that had been shadowing him for years, ever since his wife died. Light tingling of the front door opening brought him back to earth. He was already at his flat. A sad and silent living room was waiting for him. Well, the, this is nice flat, if I say so myself. Goosebumps traveled down his spine as he entered the room. What? Why? Driven by an almost desperate urge, he didn't even bother to hang his coat. Correctly and began slamming all of the doors, one after the other. Mm. Dude, you 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 really tired? I know you're tired and all, but don't don't slamming the doors. Don't don't blame it all on the doors. Each time, the same emptiness answered his pleads. He felt a rising dread within. His last hope, the last door, the forbidden room beyond. Bedroom? He opened it slightly and peeked inside. Of course, there was no one. He fell heavily onto the sofa or living room. The crushing solitude came back in full force, crushing him again and again, wounding his face with invisible cuts, the cuts of time. It was happening again. All of, a, all of a sudden, Tristan Mallory felt immensely exhausted. He held his head 
in his hands, staring at the floor for long minutes. Then, after what felt like an eternity, he abruptly got to his feet. He gathered all of the framed pictures that had been, that had been on the furniture and stowed them away in a closet. The memories needed to be out of sight. When he was sure that there was no more pictures sticking out, Tristan put his coat back on and rushed outside. Okay, first of all, you are tired. And then, you fell to the sofa. And you got the plating. And then you stood up and going back outside. Dude, wake up your mind. If I were you, I'd just stay at home. It was chilly, a bit dark, but there was still enough light to see by. It was the ideal time to take a walk. At least that's what he could have thought. As he hurried along the sidewalk, the 30-year-old man was anything but relaxed. Incredibly nervous, he walked around the places that were most familiar to him, looking for a serenity that seemed to be definitively out of reach. While passing a park near his home, Tristan Mallory suddenly heard a high-pitched, almost inaudible plea. Uh, wait, wait, wait. High-pitched, but almost inaudible, like not, not heard. His heart jumped, and he stopped. Wait, 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 so the, this girl like, like, screaming? Uh, no, no, no. In the dim light of the setting sun, he made out the silhouette of a little girl sitting on a swing with her head bowed. Tears were rolling down her cheeks. Go on. Afraid of startling, afraid of startling her, he approached slowly and took, took a closer look. Her clothes were clumped. She had neither a coat nor a scarf, and there were scratches on several spots on her skin, as if she had been in a fight. The park was completely deserted, and she seemed to have been there for a while. For a second, Tristan Mallory felt the temptation to abandon her there, to leave her to her fate. But very quickly, he mentally justiced himself he couldn't do that. So he placed himself in front of her and asked in a soft voice. Sorry, I, 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 can, I can do voice over. I mean, I, I will use my normal voice instead. Is something wrong? At first, the little girl seemed not to hear him. She choked on her sobs, hiccuped, and shuddered. Patiently, Tristan Mallory stroked her hair and repeated, Toot! Why are you crying? What happened? Okay, you, you met this girl the first time and you stroked her hair. <laughs> it took her a long minute to calm down a bit, but eventually she wiped at her tears and answered with a faint voice interrupted by sobs. I don't know. I think I've lost something important, really important, but I can't remember what it was. You lost something, but can't remember. Amnesia? Are you amnesia? Tristan Mary sighed, feeling a mixture of compassion and pity. She seemed so lost, so vulnerable. This is gonna be good. He wanted to hold her so tightly that her sadness would melt away. Uh, and at the same and at, and at the same time with him, a voice was telling him that he shouldn't be too forceful, that he shouldn't take advantage of her weakness. Yeah, that that will make you a creep, dude. So he tried not to lose face, to look reassuring, yet in front of this sad little girl. 
he did not feel confident at all. Are you all alone? Where are mommy and daddy? I don't know. Do you live far away from here? I don't know. What's your name? Ambre or Ambre. Uh, I think I, I spell it Ambre instead. I don't know. Ambre. Yep, Ambre is it? Well, Ambre, you can stay here out in the wind. You're going to catch a cold eventually. And you don't want to get sick, do you? No, I hate being sick. See, you've got to warm yourself up somewhere. The night's getting close. But I don't know where to go. In that case, what do you think about going to my place? It's not far away from here and it'll make a much better sleeping place than the swing. I doubt she slept on the swing. Maybe on a, on a bench or something. Ambre seemed wary but she had no other choice but to follow him. He gently reached a hand to her and for the first time she lifted her eyes. They were washed out, blurry with tears and hesitant. He thought it a good idea to force a smile to appear reassuring. Even with the fatigue, Tristan Mallory showed the most convincing smiling face he could and cocked her hand, so fine, so frail, to help her get to her feet. The young girl stabbed her, wobbly and weak. She had, probably, she had probably not eaten all day long. Carefully, he led her to his place while making sure she won't trip. The 30-year-old man removed his coat and shut the front door behind them. Oh. Uh, this is a game, so it's okay like, like you met the girl for the first time and then you invite her either your house, flat, or something but in real life, the, that will make you like a pedophile or something or maybe not pedophile, maybe like a bad person like you will do something to the child or something make yourself at home, I'll give you something Passing through the kitchen, he turned on the light in the living room so that his flat would look less gloomy. While roaming through this, uh, while roaming through his fridge looking for a good meal idea, he periodically stole several glasses over the counter. Toot! In the living room, Ambre was still walking around, a bit wild, still on defensive. She explored this new environment by looking around, admiring the, orna- the ornaments. Unfortunately, she didn't find much to pique her interest. It was a planned house, almost too planned. There, was, there were no clues about the occupants' lives. Taking advantage of Tristan's being distracted by a packet of noodles, she escaped to the hallway and tried to find the bathroom to relieve an urgent need. You, you could just say uh, to pee or something. She found it quickly enough and before returning to the hallway, she noticed that all the doors were wide open except for one. Strangely, before she even had the time to think about it, she was drawn to that doorway. Why the music stop? Intrigued, Ambre felt magnet- magnetically attracted by the slightly open door. Just one peek was all she wanted, but she struggled to see anything through the crack. Was this Bluebeard's cabinet a frightening? Tomb where Tristan Mallory stored the. Oh no no no! Was this Bluebeard's cabinet a frightening tomb? A frightening tomb where Tristan Mallory stored the corpses, corpses of his former wives. 
I really can read, but I know I know what the last sentence mean. The little girl pushed the door open, entered the room, and switched the light on. It was a bedroom filled with plushes, plushies, and soft cushions. A big bed was brightly displayed in the center of the room, accompanied by a, pre- by a pretty dressing table to one side. I want the fox glasses, the fox dog, the orange fox on the bed. The walls were painted to look like a bright blue sky. The storage furniture, coordinated with the sweet colors of trinkets, were overflowing with mysteries. Wait, 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 the music is kinda loud, why? The music should lower a little bit. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Let me check. On the nightstand, she could get a glimpse of a knight-like shape as a cute mascot. There was a fairy-like ambience about this strange room, to the extent that Ambre could represent, could repress a little extra, exclamation of surprise. <sighs> this game really a perfect way to practice my English. Closing the door so that the 30-year-old would discover her hiding spot, she stretched out on the colorful bed. Rolled into a ball, jumped about, and snuck under the bed sheets. Inexplicably, she felt an, she felt at ease in this room worthy of a princess. It seems to have been built for her to correspond to her every fantasy. She then approached a big teddy bear, which was tempting her. She grabbed it immediately, hugged it, hugged it, and covered it with kisses. Smooches. Her pale face was illuminated by a white, pure, innocent smile, a child's smile. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, Tristan Mallory had finished cooking the noodles and was about to serve the meal when he noted the absence of the little girl. Slightly worried, he called for her. Let me just save this first, okay? Empty slot. Okay, return. Embre, Embre, are you here? Nervous. Wait, the music stop again. Okay. Uh, no, the music just changed. Nervous, he looked after her in all the rooms, checking to see if she was in the bathroom. He searched everywhere in the house until there were only the last room. The entry door makes a lot of noise when it's open, so so I would have heard it if she had left. Could she actually be in there already? Ow! I love the art style. With a contrite sigh, he headed towards the fully lit forbidden room and discovered Umbre playing with the stuffed animals. His gaze softened. I suppose that I can do anything, he thought to reassure himself. Without a word, he went to s- he went to sit next to her. On the bed, the little girl was moving the stuffed animal's heads while making them speak in her weak voice. She was narrating a stuffed animal tea party and seemed to be enjoying herself very much. The light was back in her eyes. Suddenly, she got mad at Club Cow and scolded her harshly. 
Oh, that that grey cow. Okay. It's dirty. Stop it right now. You you're making a mess. Ellie, what did I just say? It's a it's dirty. You've got to behave yourself. And don't roll on the floor. You shouldn't make a fuss just because you didn't get what you wanted. As punishment, she set the cow in the corner while ordering her not to move and replace it with a pony with the long eyelashes. The stuffed animal tea party hosted by the blue monkey was obviously not going as planned. The 30-year-old man examined the little girl's every move with care. She finally noticed his presence. He felt he had to speak. Are you having fun? Yeah, I didn't know that there was a bedroom like this in your house. Whose room is it? It was my wife's favorite room before she before she left. I mean, this room was a bit too childish to be the wife. Really. What happened to her? It's a long story. Maybe I will tell you another time. Meanwhile, the meal is getting colder. Don't you want to eat? I'm coming right now. What's for dinner? Ramen! Noodles! Oh, okay, polonaise sauce with pasta. Oh, pasta. Okay, noodles. Fine. Great, great. I love it. That evening, Tristan Mallory admired little Ambre as she wove down her foot, half amused, half distracted. Seeing her so happy soothed his heart a little, but at the same time, at the same time... Are you tired? The child suddenly asked with a serious air. A little, I work hard today. She didn't make any more comments. Still amazed by the princess bedroom, she revived the topic with her steady eyes. Do you like it? Yeah, a lot. I wish I had similar room. If you want, I give it to you. What? My wife left a long time ago. Her stuff is still inside and I don't use it. So if you like, it's yours. You can stay in the room while I'm looking for your parents and what you lost. What do you say? Her eyes. <laughs> can I really? But it doesn't belong to me. There is nothing sadder than a house without life, don't you think? Ooh, deep. I know that my wife loved, loved to rest in her favorite room. There she felt at this, like on a cloud. But now she's not living here anymore. Since you seem like to this, uh, since since you seem to like this place, I think it would make her happy to know that her bedroom is in good hands. And I can do whatever I want in it. While I'm at work, you'll be able to play in this room as much as you want. I leave you some leftovers for the lunch. You only have to heat them up in the microwave. And in the evening, we'll play together if you like to. Do I need to? Do I need to go to school? Uh uh-uh, uh, no more school. Only games. Dude, she should go to school. Yay, great then. In front of Ambrose's overflowing enthusiasm, Tristan Mallory couldn't help but smile faintly, almost pitifully. Yes, that's it indeed, he kept telling himself, as if to reassure himself. All I'm doing is keeping her around until she remembers who she is and what she's lost. Waiting for her to remember. Thus began their strange routine. Tristan Mallory woke up early in the morning to go to work, but before leaving and rushing into the fall, he had to take a few minutes of preparation to face the daily grind 
a few brief minutes on the threshold to gaze at the sleeping amber. Ugh! Oh, already speaking for 30 minutes. Then he ran away through the streets covered by dead leaves, escaping far away toward the mountains of paperwork, toward the hate. Baleful tower furnished by fast offices where the slaves chained to their computers toiled away for the lord of, the, of that place. Anyway, that was what the little girl thought his working day looked like. As for her, <coughs> she woke up easily around 9 am and her first reflex was to stretch and yawn in the front in front of cartoons with a bowl of cereals in hand. She, fo- she followed her favorite heroine's adventures. All of them were beautiful and courageous. All of them were friends for life. Princesses with elegant superpowers covered with light effects and flower petals. Sailor Moon? Wrist Rich and loved, they live a perfect and and viable existence, especially the main character, who owned a bedroom very similar to Ambrose's. It was colorful and filled with cute accessories. However, this room was only a part of a bigger palace furnished the same way. How I would, how I would like to live in a castle as well. With cute animals as, his, as her friend, the heroine hunted the villains, fell into traps, and called for the help of her charming prince, an ideal fantasy man who served her hand and foot. Life seemed easy, full of clouds and adventure. All that was needed was to send back the bad woman to her hiding place in the darkness. After all, she was nasty because she invited the young dazzling girls. Nasty because she was old and disil what this and disillusion. Yeah, I know that. Ambre would have loved to have magical powers, allowing her to make cute outfits appear, allowing her to have stable where unicorns slept allowing her to have a bold room where she could organize extravagant parties based on beautiful dresses and cupcakes. Oh. It was always really disappointing for her to see the end of the episode. Of course, there were other programs, but the story with magical jewels was, was her favorite. Sailor Moon, definitely Sailor Moon. When the cartoon ended, she went to fill her coloring books in her room, daydreaming about being among these heroines. And then at midday, she heated up the leftovers that Tristan had left and went back watching TV. New programs awaited her. Again, she had her favorite, the one where a little girl owned a, pu- a pu- puppy that was different from the others. It was a red puppy who could sneak around. It was very adorable with its big eyes and its comical expression that it met, made her melt. Red puppy sneak around. I wonder what's, what's that referencing for? Uh, maybe you guys can help me in the comments. Red puppy that sneak around. How I would like to have a dog that cute. Red puppy, red puppy. Oh, I don't watch anime that often. Uh, the meal passed quickly to the rhythm of opening songs that she knew by heart. This was usually the time Tristan chose to call to make sure everything was okay. 
She never missed this opportunity to tell him that the content of the episodes of the day, how the heroine had defeated the evil witch with a magical mirror, or how the little dog had helped her mistress at school. Evil witch with a magical mirror. Little nightmares? Just kidding. Relief he would... Oh, relief he would... No, no, no. She would start eating his... No, what? Relief he would start eating his sandwiches without a appetite but shaded by little girl's words. Uh, is, is that Tristan? She hung up satisfied with her story and usually turned off the television after the last cartoon to make a nap in her big bed, surrounded by her stuffed toys in general. In general, at this time, she read a fairy tale. She loved to tell herself the story of Cinderella again and again while sucking her teddy bear's ears. It was her favorite. People and life itself were nasty with Cinderella. She had to work hard. It was exhausting. She had to earn her meal. And the nasty, ugly sisters believed themselves superior. Superior. Fortunately, the prince recognized the heroine's natural talent. She was pretty and she was special. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The heroine was Cinderella? He brought her with him to his castle to live a golden existence, where she wouldn't have to work her fingers to the bone, where money flowed freely, where Cinderella could have everything she wanted, including all the things that shone, accessories, dresses, cakes. All she had to do fill time was to organize parties with her friends. The ugly sisters were not invited. They were too ugly, too rude and they did not deserve such a paradise. Cinderella was happy. She knew love, true love, the only love, the love with gliding and glitter, uh, with gilding and glitter. For what more could she ask? Ambre fell asleep happy, hoping to, man- to meet her charming prince one day, the one who the one who would only have eyes for her and would give her a room like the one the princesses that she admired so much had. Yeah, you you met you met him already, Ambre. <laughs> uh, so she watch TV and then eat and then take a nap and then watch TV again. When she opened her eyes, the little girl rushed again in the living room to watch the tape. Ambre loved the idea of a glass coffin containing a body which would not grow old despite death, that would remain always young and beautiful, lying in wait to be freed from her prison for the magical keys that would change the course of her story. Ah, sorry, uh, I will skip one dialogue before, the, before this because the recording stopped, but it was, she was watching Disney movie. The prince spirited, way, spirited her away from the common hood of those proletarian dwarfs who were friendly but so uncouth. She also loved the idea of a beautiful and rebellious mermaid swimming through the oceans, looking for treasures but sacrificing her freedom for the man in her life, sacrifice, sacrificing the endless to squeeze in this gilded cage she had fantasized a thousand times. The beautiful and rebellious mermaid never listened to anyone else, which reminded her of her own condition. She too was a sweet, capricious girl. She played these tapes in a loop day after day until snack time came. By then, stuffed with 
stuff with idyllic image she dug into the sweets that Tristan bought for her. Cupcakes, colorful macarons, pastries, bread, and Nutella. Of course, there were cartoons at this time as well. As it was getting late, she finally pushed off button to resume her fantasies elsewhere in her room, wielding her dolls with wielding her dolls with skill. What? Wielding her dolls with skill, perfectly tracing the course of her dreams. But the high point of the day was probably when Tristan finally returned from work. She knew he was there from creaking of the door. She would rush into the living room to greet him, and all joyous, she would throw herself at him, timidly at first, then with more enthusiasm over the weeks. She loved being carried on his shoulder to mimic the airplanes and to fly through the flat until they crashed on the bed, laughing. Playing together was so much fun. With her friends, she could give life to her characters more easily. Her favorites? Playing mommy and daddy. Umbre played the role of the mother, always occupied by the well-being of her child. A PVC doll with dead eyes supposed to embody an adorable little baby. She had to wash him, change him, cuddle him and give him his bottle. Tristan had the role of the father. He had to read the newspaper in the kitchen while waiting for his wife to cook him a good meal, a role which hardly got him involved. But he was more than satisfied satisfied with that. Oh, when will it end? Like, like, when will I choose, like, question or root or something. Ambrian took her task very seriously. She had to lead she had to lead role after all. Therefore she served her imaginary husband plastic fries and fruits with a posy posy pout like boss. He appreciated the gesture. However, the real meal was left to Tristan's start once the game ended. A meal which the little girl took as an opportunity to deliver the rest of her fabulous adventures. Tristan only had to listen to her with a smile on his face before requiring her to go to the bathroom to wash up and brush her teeth. Ambre always grumbled at bad time, but her sexless, sexless Barbie mermaid quickly helped her to forget the inconvenience. Sexless Barbie mermaid, like like a doll, but without. Never mind. More than once, she slyly waited for the thirty-year-old man to come close enough for her to shoot. To shoot him with a fish-shaped water gun. Innocent laughter would put and chew. Then the little girl had to be tucked into her big princess bed while he was telling her a story, usually a fairy tale. In those moments, he blinked more and more slowly, looking up at him with a touching expression. Tristan would almost smile from cuteness. He was careful not to close the door all the way. The corridors like had to hunt the monster, which could disturb Ambrose's sleep. It was a specific request from her. She was fearful. The 30-year-old man had to protect her from ghosts at the slightest sound. That was his promise to her. Before going to sleep, Tristan Mallory found some comfort in contemplating her sleep. He hoped that her sleep that her sleep would be inhabited with the nice dreams, that she wouldn't forget him, that she would think about him in whatever may it may be, in whatever way it may be.
Could she even feel his presence or how much he cared for her? The way they organized their weekends allowed for a, for a, more, for a more festive time. It was the time for outings. It was out of the question for Andre to get bored, to stay shut in the dike and peek flat again. She had to see some landscape. So they went to lively places, the pool, the amusement park, the ice rink, the movie theater, restaurants. She had to try everything. Every week was a different universe. Running along at a brisk pace with her impeccably polished shoes, the little girl jumped from right to right while hanging on Tristan's arm. It warmed his heart to see her having innocent fun. In front of a smile that big, he could only imitate the little girl's good mood despite himself. Every time, inevitably, she would ask for a dessert a pancake or an, or an ice cream, and he would watch her out of the corner of his eyes spreading whipped cream on her face. The temptation to lick the tap of ice cream from the tip of her nose or in the corner of her lips was nearly too much. Dude, you, you're a stranger. Maybe you two already been for weeks, but don't don't leak or something like that. Give just give her a tissue or a napkin or something. Such a display, both childish and unhealthy, tickled his darkest thought, his most pitiful thoughts. However, hard he rejected them with all his strength. His hand became sweaty and trembling. His hand confessed his torment. But Ambre could understand. Ambre was a little girl, only a little girl. The months flew by at breakneck speed. Tristan refused to admit it, but his young protege was growing up. He wanted to ignore the fact, turn a blind eye, but the unstoppable passage of time had already started to do its work. Andre was going through a strange crisis. That evening, she was particularly angry and proclaimed vigorously. I don't want to be a child anymore. How so? I want to become older. But you have plenty of time for this, Andre. I want to become older faster. That way I could do more things. The 30-year-old man sighed. He obviously did not know how to answer such a surgeon. He had never had a child and he was not very good at calming down revolts. While he was shooting his worries in a rush of hot water, she displayed an angry pout. That's not fair. I wish I could be older right now, if I only had a mother. I wonder what Tristan's wife looked like. For example, I'm sure that she was a kind person. But they never want to talk about it. He avoids the subject. It could be that he is hiding something from me. Intrigued, Andre took advantage of his absence to open a drawer she had never touched before. Inside, under the telephone directory, was a big leather notebook. Convinced she had found a treasure, uh, convinced she had found a treasure. She grabbed it and opened it. It was a photo album. Spread on the pages were bright smiles and tender gestures. Browsing through the pictures, the little girl discovered her guardian, young and dancing, in the arms of co co coquettish young lady. 
I never heard that word before, so apologize. Dressed soberly and tastefully, she was strolling around the seashore with a soul on her shoulders or in a park holding an ice cream. But what caught her eye was a very specific picture that towered in the center of the album. Tristan, wearing a suit, was leading his lover out of a church with clumsy footsteps under a shower of flower petals. She looked so happy, so fulfilled, in her large, refined white dress that Ambre was stupefied. All the more so as the bride looked exactly like her. Um, it does? Uh, is he? He? She's so pretty. What are you looking at? Distance had an appearance made her jump, so much that she dropped the forbidden object. The thirty year old man case darkened immediately. You searched through the closet to see what my wife looked like, didn't you? She answered in a shaggy voice. Guiltily. Yes, are you going to scold me? Of course not. I just would have preferred that you didn't see it. Why? Why don't you ever talk about her? I want to know. He sighed, appearing upset as he, as he looked into those begging eyes, eyes that he had never been able to resist for long. Reluctantly, he sat down on the couch and told her how he, how he met the one he thought would be the love of his life and related all that they had gone through together. Ambre listened with a wide-eyed attention. She liked that story very much. Tristan seemed briefly get younger as he evoked the past. Describing how head over heels he had been for her, and how happy she had made him. Their peaceful and ordinary everyday life was something the little girl envied. Envied, oh, sorry. Up in the tale, she couldn't help but pressure him. And then, and then, what happened? until the light shining in the man's green eyes brutally vanished. And then she... she left. Where to? Far away, to a place where I can reach her anymore. So, she died? Let me see first. Every day I pray that she'll somehow hear me, that she'll wake up, that she'll remember me. I don't know if, if she'll emerge. I don't know if I don't know if she'll ever emerge from that dream that's keeping her captive. Is she dead? Yeah. Sometimes it feels like it, but no, she's still alive, just in a different world from mine. If I could have joined her, I would. I would. <laughs> oh my god, so much appreciation! I couldn't. I would. Uh, I would have sacrificed everything for her, and today she's forgotten me forever. That's sad. Tristan sighed again, head down, as a heavy crossing silence came between them. Ambre stared at the photo, bewitched by the woman's smile. Deep down in her heart, she had an odd thought. If I was older, I could replace Tristan's wife, and he wouldn't be sad anymore. Well... That night, she left a devastated Tristan, lying as immobile as a statue on the sofa, sleeping between the covers of her cozy bedsheets. She felt helpless, 
if only I was older. The thought took root more and more violently, violently, violently in her mind to the point where it became an emergency. She had to become Tristan Mallory's wife. Then sees little Andre. It was now out of the question for her to stay a little girl. She wanted to grow as prematurely as a butterfly, a beauty caused by its ephemeral life. Thus began a kind of adolescence. She no longer woke up in the morning when the 30-year-old went to work. She waited until midday to surface and took her meal at that time. Tristan did not call her at the usual hour anymore either. He knew that she would not be in the mood. After a brief meal, the young girl watched television while living through magazines, bought with her pocket money. Her pen- uh, with the pocket money, her benefactor gave her. Her afternoon fluctuated between American TV shows and beauty tips. Between the pages of the magazines, she learned how to become pretty to seduce men, a late motif she liked a lot. She wanted Tristan to look at her, to take an interest in her in her in different way. To be seen as a woman, she had to act as a woman. But she absolutely did know how to do this. These magazines, which were overflowing with tips of all kinds, seemed like El Dorado to her. Through the articles, she learned how to act, how to become a true lady. It wasn't very complicated. She only had to keep a close watch on all of her gestures to control her every moment permanently so as to convey the best image possible. She had to trap down all human weaknesses, every inconvenience, and walk with a relaxed and self-assured air. But not too much or she would frighten, she would cross. Ambre nodded as she was reading on what the editor wrote. So, basically, I, I'm gonna leave the episode here. Hang on, let, let me just save. Yes. I'm gonna leave the episode here because it's already 50 minutes. Uh, so far, the story is about like you found a girl in the park, a stranger. Both of them are stranger. And now, now they're living together. And now just the girl wanted to be his wife. I don't know. Uh, the the pacing is kind of fast, but also in the game is slow. I mean, there's so many sentences, uh, like like story paragraph. Uh, how how do I call it? Like like I have to read a lot. Just the art is nice, but it's just well. What do you expect from a kinetic novel? You have to read a lot, of course. Uh, I will give you guys the link of the game or the description. Maybe you guys can play it on your own free time. It's a free game on Steam. I I don't know how how the story will end, but I I hope. It have it have a happy ending. Who knows? Or maybe a heartbreaking. Yeah. So see you guys in the next next part. Yeah. See you guys in the next part. Bye. Fake out.